two. And I've got my calculator and I've got my three colors of pens, green, dark green or almost black and red that you'll be seeing today. And what we want to start about talk, talking about is uh, exact and inexact numbers. <clears throat> now, uh, exact numbers are uh, known to be exact, so there's no uncertainty. And there's no error. So error and uncertainty are sort of two words that we're going to use as basically the same thing. In fact, I can't um, think of any differences between them right now, but they are two terms that we use. And um, examples uh, are going to be uh, things that are counted. So for example, uh, if I were to say, uh, how many eggs do you have? You might say 12 eggs because you actually counted the number of eggs. And we have a word for 12 eggs. It's one dozen eggs. And so you can count dozens as well, um, <clears throat> although it's not as clean because you can have parts of dozens. And I just want to point out, though, that uh, eggs, 12 eggs equals one dozen eggs. That is a unit conversion factor that we've been talking about. Um, but you're technically counting the eggs. Um, so you can have, um, I'm trying to think what other, th oh, here's another example, uh, stairs. If I draw a set of stairs here and I count them, so we'll start here. There's one, two, three, four stairs. And this is uh, something that we'll talk about uh, later in chemistry is about how stairs, again, are something that you can have whole numbers of. There's no three and a third stairs that has any real meaning for us anyway. <clears throat> and so let's see, what else did I want to say? Um, stairs, oh, they're counted numbers. And typically, like, um, there's going to be a whole set of the one meter equals 100 centimeters. Those are also exact. So counted numbers and whole number conversion factors, let's call them. <clears throat> and there's one other thing we have to say about exact numbers. Excuse me, I have a little bit of my tea here. Is that exact numbers, counted numbers, whole numbers have infinite significant figures. Have infinite significant figures. And we haven't talked about significant figures yet, but when we do, I want you to refer back to this. Significant. figures. And now I can do some more examples. Um, so one meter equals 100 centimeters. So that's a, a version of counted numbers because there would be you would be counting exactly 100 centimeters in a meter. Another way of looking at this is most definitions. Um, definitions is another good way of thinking about exact numbers. And then there's one exception, which is that there is one <clears throat> exact definition that has decimal places in it, right? There's not counted numbers. So uh, as far as definitions, one inch equals 2.54 centimeters. is the only definition I can think of that we use in this class, and there may be others, but it's the only one I can think of um, that we use in this course that um, has decimal places in it. So this is the def, so let's put only definition with decimal places.
And again, what's important is it is this conversion here. These are exact numbers. This is a definition. And that means this does have infinite significant figures as well. And we'll come back to that when we talk about significant figures. Now let's talk about inexact numbers. I mean, the short uh, and sweet version of this is that inexact numbers are anything that is measured. And we'll do a lot of measurements. Um, and inexact numbers do have error. And again, another word for error is uncertainty. And the whole idea behind significant figures is to tell us scientifically when we communicate as scientists, one amongst each other, is how do we communicate to know how much error or uncertainty there is in a number. So have error and uh, have uncertainty that is described by using significant figures. And uh, this will be the last time I write out significant figures, uh, the whole thing, because we have an abbreviation for it. And you'll see two abbreviations. Typically in my notes, my abbreviation is sig figs. I've seen other chemistry teachers refer to them as significant digits as well, and that's fine, sig digs. I use sig figs. And then on your homework, I typically write SF for sig figs. It's just a shorter version as I'm grading the homework. If I take off a little bit of points, and I don't typically do this on homework, but on the labs, it'll say uh, SF next to it, and that means sig figs. Um, so uh, an example, uh, we'll get to the examples now. So if you were weighed a, a quarter, and you were to say that is 5.670 grams uh, equals the mass of a quarter. Um, and the idea is you probably use the, this on a scale with three decimal places. And there are scales with four decimal places that would give us even more accurate information, have less error and less uncertainty. And now to use that term accurate, that's what we're gonna be talking about soon as well. Uh, what is accuracy and what is precision? And let's go to that now. So accuracy and precision, um, these have definitions for us. Accuracy is um, how close a measurement is to the correct value. How close a measurement is to the correct value. And sometimes the correct value will also be, uh, instead of correct, uh, some people use accepted instead of correct and sometimes people use um, literature literature good I think I spelled that right literature value so those are all words for correct and for the measurement sometimes it's just one measurement and sometimes it's an average of measurements And typically what we try and do is we try and make it an average of measurements so that we have repeat values uh, of the same thing so that we can average and get better accuracy. Exactly, better, <laughs> sorry, just worked that out for myself there. Um, let's see, so uh, there's a calculation associated with this. And the calculation is the percent error. And I'll show you it first. Um, and uh, in my definition here, so 
these measurements will often come from experiment. So um, instead of just measurement or average of measurements, uh, another way of uh, referring to this is as the experimental average. Or just experiment. And so when you see that in my definition here, it's going to equal EXPT, that's my abbreviation for experiment, experiment minus correct value over correct value times 100%. And uh, one important note is that uh, experimental or sorry percent error can be negative and for example if the bank calls you up and says we have made a 20 percent error in the amount of money that's in your account it would be very important to determine whether that was a negative error and you had less money than you were supposed to were a positive error and you had more money than you were supposed to. So signs, uh, and that's a continuing theme in this and all chemistry classes. Signs are important. Signs convey information and we will use them. Let's see, accuracy, okay. So um, now let's talk about precision. And for precision, precision is going to be uh, the closeness of repeated measurements the closeness of repeated measurements and uh, I will uh, repeated measurements and this this may seem redundant and it may be repeated measurements of exactly the same thing. So, for example, when you measure two milliliters of a substance, and then you measure two m more milliliters of a substance, your calculations must always refer to the two milliliters. You can't measure two milliliters of a substance and then measure four milliliters of a substance and have that be the same thing. And it's a finer point, but it'll come up in, in lab later on. So it has to be the same thing. And uh, there is a calculation associated with this. It's called the standard deviation. And the standard deviation has the symbol lowercase Greek letter sigma, which I draw as a circle with a hat on top. Um, and the calculation is going to look like this. First off, this is going to be always plus or minus because it will always refer to how close measurements are to each other. So they can be positive or negative. So, so and then there's gonna be a big square root Maybe not that big, but we'll see. All right. This is the sigma sign, which means sum. And I'm going to give you the um, sort of the general definition, and we'll practice this uh, in uh, upcoming pages. So this means sum. I equals 1 is going to mean that you're going to go to each individual point all the way up to n. And so uh, n is the total number of measurements so I um, refers to each measurement and let's see oh yes so xi, if we have three measurements, then i will go from one to three, and we'll look at the first one, 
the second one, and the third one for each of these calculations. And x bar is the average. And don't worry, we'll practice this. That has to be squared, then added up to for each of them, and then over n minus 1. That's the formula. We're going to practice it in a couple minutes. Um, but now uh, we have two things. We have accuracy, which is closeness to the correct value. And we have precision, which is the closeness between each of the values. And I wanted to draw you a picture of each of these. We're going to start with good accuracy and good precision. And let's just assume we have five measurements. Oh, sorry, I, I need one more point up here. Two, to do a standard deviation, you need at least a minimum of three points. Minimum of three points, three measurements. And that means n equals 3 or more. This doesn't work if you have 2. And that's why you'll see in the lab, and most chemistry labs, if you can, you'll always do th at least 3 measurements of the same thing. All right. So we're going to do 5 measurements down here. Good accuracy, good precision. This is a bullseye or a target for darts. And we throw 5 darts, and they all go right exactly in the middle. That's good accuracy. And good precision is that all five of them are very close to each other. They're all close to each other. So now, then we're going to do bad accuracy but good precision. So bad accuracy means they're not all in the middle, our target, that is but they're still close together. And so it doesn't matter where, but let's just draw them over here. So five, all five times you made the measurement, you got basically the same value, but it wasn't close to the correct value. Um, and let's make that note. So correct value is center of bullseye. which is kind of a weird term, but all right. So now bad accuracy, bad, uh, bad precision, they're far apart. And if you look at the average of them, it's not near the center. So far apart, not near center. So how about we'll put them down here. Far apart, not near center. And why are we doing this? So you're going to be asked to evaluate accuracy and precision for all of your data that you get in lab this semester and certainly moving forward. Good accuracy, bad precision. This typically doesn't happen. It's hard to get five values that have bad precision, meaning they're far apart, and yet good accuracy. It can happen, and so bad precision means they're uh, the opposite of this, they're far apart, but yet they have good accuracy. So you might put one, two, three, four, five. So all five of these average to a value that is very close to correct. And um, and I've, I've done this. I've done experiments where I had bad um, precision. And what you do is instead of just doing five, you would actually do like... Uh, 25 data points and for those 25 data points right you might get what uh, I don't know if I'm gonna draw 25 here but let's see 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 13 14 15 16 17 18 19 20 and actually I, I do have a publication in which we had we took 20 data points and we were able to say that our data was fairly accurate 
even though each individual point um, had pretty bad precision. And so uh, the power of statistics, the power of having a lot of data is that your average can be very good, which is pretty cool. Now onto the example. In this example, it says a student weigh, weighs an object several times and got the following data. 4.2 grams, 5.5 grams, 2.9 grams. If the actual mass of the object is 4.4 grams, how would you describe the student's result in terms of accuracy and precision? Well, accuracy is always going to be, meaning calculate the percent error. Precision is always going to be, calculate the standard deviation. And for standard deviation, or let's do percent error. Percent error equals experiment minus correct. Over correct times 100. And you'll see, by the way, that um, there's no videos for this for the homework and yet you are being asked to do it. So, um, so, or sorry, there's no tutorial videos. This basically acts as your tutorial video. Oh, maybe there are. Well, there's good practice anyway. All right, so um, the experiment here is going to be the average value. So I'm gonna take the average of all three of these. Um, and then I know my correct value is 4.4 grams. So let's see, so average, I can do the average on my calculator. It's going to be 4.2 plus 5.5 plus 2.9. Divide by three, I get an average value of 4.2. And in standard deviation, X bar is the average, so I'm just gonna use that, 4.2 grams. That means that's gonna be the number that goes in here. My correct, here it's called the actual mass, that's another way of saying it, is 4.4 grams over 4.4 grams times 100%. And we'll see this over and over in this course as well. Note that all the units for grams cancel out and our final units for this will be uh, percent. So I've got 4.2 minus 4.4. If you wanted to do the minus first, you have to hit the equal sign now and then do the divide by. Divide by 4.4 times 100. I get minus 4.5%. And for reasons that will become clear shortly, I will just put minus 5% there with one digit. Let's see, standard deviation. That's gonna be fun. So standard deviation, I've got my formula right here. And uh, let's see, so let's see if we can keep that up. There you go. There's my formula. So sigma is going to equal plus or minus, and then it's gonna be big square root. I'm gonna make my square root even longer this time. And it's gonna be um, sum over all the points, each of them. So my first point is 4.2. I'm going to subtract my average value, 4.2, and I'm going to square it. That's what this is. It says each point minus the average, square it, plus the next point minus the average, And this may be the one of the few times where I'm not gonna use my units in here, though the units do cancel. Uh, or no, you, you end up with units on this. And then 2.9 uh, minus 4.2 squared, all of that over three, which is my number of points. So n equals three, minus one. 
right? So that's the formula right here applied to this specific example. I can see this math is easy. It's just zero, zero squared is zero. I've got uh, for this one, 5.5 minus 4.2 equals, hit the equals button, and then let it do its math, and then square it on my calculator anyway. So I get 1.69, 2.9 minus 4.2, square that, I get 1.69. So I've got 0 plus 1.69 plus 1.69 over, so I add that up, and I'll just do one more set here. 1.69 plus 1.69, 3.38 divided by 2, and my 3.38 divided by 2 equals 1.69. Fair enough. And then square root it. And I get 1.3. And I did such a simple example here because I wanted to show you that the standard deviation is actually equal to or very close to equal to um, the average distance between your average and each of the points. So 1.3 is the difference between these two points and the average. And you can see that it's a little weird because one of our data points was exactly equal to the average, and that's not always true. However, uh, this one, standard deviation is 1.3. And so if you want to see if your standard deviation is done correctly, a good estimate way of doing it is to say, all right, about how far apart are my points? They're about 1.3 apart. That's about what the standard deviation can be. Anyway, we'll get more practice with this too.